Hello, my name is Brian Bernard. Welcome to the SAP Samples Spotlight Series. The SAP Samples organization on github.com is a channel where development teams publish sample code, sample applications, and educational materials that showcase SAP product features and help support customers. In these segments, we'll take a look at some of the more interesting and useful projects along with the people who created them. Today, developer advocate DJ Adams is here with Christian Giorgi, a development expert and product owner for the SAP Cloud Application Programming Model. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you very much, Brian. And yeah, welcome from my side as well, Christian. Uh, so um, yeah, we're on the SAP Samples uh, organization homepage on GitHub, and there's a ton of repositories. And in fact, we want to talk about the CAP samples, right, Christian? But in fact, just before we started, you did point out quite, quite uh, accurately that there's a couple, right? Exactly. Yeah, there's two of them. Uh, as you might or might not know, we have like two runtime stacks that we are like the CAP runs on. One is Node.js, one is Java, and that quite naturally let us uh, like split our sample material along these two things. And there's the, the first repository you see there is for Node.js, the second one is for Java. So that's the whole explanation behind it. Beautiful. Okay, so um, as we've only got a short amount of time, um, let's let's have a look at specifically the Node.js uh, cloud cap samples, um, because I think that's that's had some very recent updates but anyway we'll, we'll get to that uh, do, you want to, do you want to sort of give us an overview of what what this repo is all about what it contains why it's there and then we'll you know we'll dive in yeah absolutely thank you uh the repository actually has been there for quite a while we also used it in the open sap course that we did like yeah. one and a half year back in a previous form so content changed quite significantly since then but uh, yeah, so this is basically a collection of um, sample code for CDS for CAP. Uh, one of the reasons is that we found out quite early on, and it's like an obvious thing that a line of one line of code is just explains more than just like one big page of uh, like documentation explanation. Exactly. And that's why and, and like also users really demanded for it. So we, we basically found a home here for, for that sample code and basically wanted want to illustrate the various aspects of the programming model uh, with bigger or smaller chunks of code here. Yeah, no, that's that's awesome. I mean, there's a phrase, I, I can't remember where it's from now, but uh, rough consensus and running code, that's, you know, that's 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 a mm -hmm. motto to live by, right? Yeah, absolutely. Running code is really one, one of our principles as well. Yeah, and, uh, you know, we also want to, like, um, um, are about to uh, like educate all our developers, really, like, to work on, on these examples while doing the development for uh, the programming model so it's not only like a, a thing that we just like uh, put out after the fact but also like really want to live on during during our development to really yeah. just you know get early feedback on whether things work the way we want it or not perfect perfect yeah. so we're looking at the main readme here uh right at the top level at the root of the repo and it looks like we've got some installation instructions. You know, like many repos, you know, you can you can look at them on GitHub, but also you can you know you can clone them and you know actually start running code within them locally, right? Exactly. So as most of the instructions, they tell you what you need to install locally on your machine. It's basically just the CD SDK, the development toolkit for the programming model, plus uh, maybe Visual Studio Code if you want to use it, uh, or you can also use uh, the SAP Business Application Studio where all of that is pre-installed. Exactly, exactly. Of course, you could always use Vim, but uh, you know that's another story. Yeah. Not to mention Vim. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got the, um, the installation guide to install uh, CAP itself. Uh, the tools should be available in VS Code and other uh, uh, other environments as well. So once you've got that, I mean, that, uh, you know, where do you go from there? That's always the question I have in my mind with repos. But here is a really nice example of, you know, what to do first. Exactly. So the, that's really like the Kickstarter we want to give you he, uh, with like the bookshop. 
um, sample or yeah, scenario that we have there. So it's a little like uh, application that just shows a list of books along with some authors and maybe some orders. You know, simple simple data model uh, that basically illustrates. The, the, the basic aspects of the programming yeah. model and what you do basically is just run an npm install which fetches all the dependencies needed and then you just run our command line utility called cds with the watch command which just kicks off the server in a like restart mode so whenever you happen to change something it will automatically um, just restart the server and the third argument is just the bookshop which means just the like the bookshop um, folder that you see up there mm -hmm. and uh, yeah on localhost 4004 you will get the run so that's the that's the bookshop folder here with yeah. what looks very much like yeah a regular sort of cap application with a db folder and a server folder and an app mm -hmm. folder you've got mm -hmm. um uh, yes. some CDS yeah. definitions here as well, right? Exactly. Maybe that's something we should uh, get uh, our uh, make make things clear. Uh, the, the, the layout structure, the file structure we have there on that second level, you see like a typical cap application structure. Uh, that's what you explained right now. On the top level, however, you find like um, smaller module or packages that are just like combined in one repository so think of them on the top level as like mini applications that uh, make up the sample collection that we have there so we right. early on we we had to make the decision should we go for like for um, like many little repositories uh oh, or yeah is this is this the mono repo question exactly exactly that's a, like a mono repo set up that allows us first of all to have like to demonstrate many applications mm -hmm. in one repository, but also like the interconnection between applications in one repository. Yeah, it's it's nice to be able to have applications that uh, you know use each other, uh, and so there's, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of plus points for for mono repos in uh, yeah uh, in this in this space, right? Of course, it's slightly like complicated setup and handling because there's one more folder level. We're aware of that, but we found it that's. Uh, easier than just having to manage or having people to manage a multitude of repositories on their machines mm, exactly That's exactly fun. so we've got things here we've got the bookshop here we've got some uh some uh, what, what i'm guessing i'm hoping is a little media server here yes uh -huh. um, and and also uh, there's orders as well so yeah all these things are sort of i'm guessing interlinked and reviews of orders or reviews of products bought for example so this all makes a lot of sense to me um, what, yeah. one thing that i did notice i'm dying to ask you actually this is not i've not seen this since i last looked which was a while ago um not only have you got an instruction here to sort of log in as a person so i'm 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 guessing that might be related to uh, authentication and authorization mm -hmm. parts to what's explained here in the repo but also you've got some testing exactly we we just like added some tests quite recently uh with just like jest or mocha as test runners it doesn't really matter mm -hmm. but inside the test folder i think on the top level you find quite quite some test code that like on top of like the productive code also demonstrates uh, some of the uh, APIs that we provide on the Node.js side uh, to just like com yeah complement the the rest of the rest of the code there. Actually, this is a this is a hidden bonus because for those developers out there building cap applications for real and wanting to find some examples of well you know how do we start with testing this mm -hmm. maybe they could start here right. That's what, like, yeah, that's a definitely a hot question that we also get like internally here. How do we test? How do we, do we start with testing? And the tests that you see here are really are, you know, just like a strong base yeah. that you can build on. You also see that little test utility that is required in line, line one there. And if you go to that index.js file in this very same folder. In this folder or in the test yeah, folder? In that folder. Folder. We are on the test folder there. Yep. Now you basically see in line two that we have like a dedicated API that we've just like uh, come up recently. It's not completely documented, but it's there that basically starts a little Node.js server on the fly, so to say. And that nice. calls that it's just like this bootstrap issue that you have in tests. How to basically start my own server and also like tearing it down and, and like 
freeing all the resources and you know servers and ports etc yeah, yeah. all that is handled in inside that little cds test oh, beautiful yeah the cds test in invocation i've not seen before that's really cool yeah yeah absolutely and yeah that's just one little thing and we will also add more mm -hmm. in, in the near future uh right so one one thing we could do maybe is yeah. to go to the um samples.md file which is a markdown file uh, yeah. Next, yeah, exactly, and that basically gives us a little outline of the different parts oh, of beautiful. the repository, mm -hmm. together with like the features that they are demonstrating. So you've got the bookshop here, which we've um, briefly talked about, right? Yeah, so that's basically like the canonical example, uh, which shows a lot of the like modeling capabilities and also the runtime capabilities. Of the of, of of the programming model, um, yeah, starting off with project setup layout, but then also like how do I do like data modeling? Uh, how do I find services? You know, yeah. all that stuff yeah. is, is shown there. Yeah, nice. uh, before that, there's even a hello world thing, you know, which is like the absolute minimal yeah. example. You know, the one line on hello world. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Nice. And I guess yeah. that also ties in with CapIa, the Cap documentation, um, because I think there's also a Hello World starter yeah. application. They go too. hand in hand. From CapIa, which is just the name of our documentation package, we refer to these samples, and the ref samples here refer uh, to the documentation in CapIa, right? So this goes, like, goes hand in hand. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm mm -hmm. just, I'm just uh, slightly aware of time here. Um, before. Brian gives us a signal. There's one thing I just wanted to mention, I noticed here, um, in the sort of the hidden directories, the dot directories, we've got, you know, the, the usual suspects, but you've also got this tours, right? Um, and I seem to remember uh, doing a, a news item on uh, VS Code tours. Can you tell us a little bit about what that is? Absolutely. That was added quite recently. And I came to, came to know that because of like a release note section that they did on VS Code, for VS Code, telling, okay, there's this nice code tools extension that they have. Microsoft is maintaining that. Mm -hmm. And this is basically allows you to guide users through a bunch of files through a repository with, awesome. for instance, code in a like nice interactive fashion. So when opening that repository in VS Code, you get a little like pop-up saying, okay, well, there's a code tour available. Would you like, first of all, to install that extension, if not already done? And second, do you want to start one of the code tours that we have there? Mm -hmm. And they basically like in a wizard way of like guided uh, tour way, lead you through different aspects of the repository. Beautiful, beautiful. And the, the yeah. code tools are defined effectively uh, here, right? In, in that, inside yeah. these files. These are plain JSON files. You can have a look at them and like fork them and play around with them. And they, yeah. So there's different steps, you know, for the different sections of the tools and, and one, each step comes with a little title and description and it refers to a line or a collection of lines and can even have some interactive commands attached. Oh, nice, nice. So many great examples. So many great examples. Um, I think we're going to have to knock this on the head. There's so much more to explore. So, um, absolutely. So, so. Christian, is there is there one final thing, anything you want to share just before um, we finish here, or are we done? Yeah, maybe uh, one one of the packages that we haven't talked about is the Fiori package, ah, because yeah. that's the one that not only, of course, shows SAP Fiori, but also combines uh, various aspects of the different uh, like uh, um, parts of the code. Mm -hmm. it, it combines the bookshop together with the orders and the review service all in one application so to say and if you start that one you basically get mo get to see most of the functionality of the of the repository again if you click in the samples md file you will oh, yeah. see what is actually uh, what it's doing. MD. Yeah. right there so if you 
Uh, oh, I did see it. Yeah. There we go. There. Yeah. You know, it, it uses the bookshop, the reviews, the orders, the common package, adds OData annotations for SAP Fury on top with drafts and value helps. There's even the Vue.js app. I was say, whoa, Vue.js here. Yeah. Yeah. Just to also demonstrate other UI technologies. Uh, yeah. So, and that makes up quite a comprehensive application. Excellent. As I would say on the BBC, other technologies are available. <laughs> Wonderful. Christian, um, thanks so much for uh, taking us through that. I guess um, I'll hand back over to Brian now. Yeah, I'll just I'll just say thanks a lot. I mean, I, I love to see the high quality, uh, you know, nature of this repository, how how complete it is, right, in the way you guide users um, and how it's kept up to date. Um, so thank you very much for all that. Um, and if you're watching, I urge you to check these out on uh, github.com slash SAP Slant. SAP samples. See you next time. Bye. See you. Bye-bye.